In this tutorial, I'll discuss using Photoshop for screen printing, and specifically how to create halftone or threshold imagery to use as direct stencils to print to transparency and burn to a silk screen. So let's get started. I'm going to use this image that I shot while scuba diving, and I want to prepare it for screen printing. Fundamentally, I have two methods I could use to do that. Either I could threshold the image to turn it all into black and white and print this to a transparency to burn to a screen. When we actually expose our screen, either light gets through or doesn't get through. So it's either black or white. And so this really is a representation of that. And I could use this for creating like spot colors, for example. I could print this in any color to my paper using my screen. Um, but I would burn my screen with an all black or white image. This is kind of cool, except we, use, we lose a lot of detail. We lose the tonal range and really force everything into black or white. So if we wanted some of the detail in our tonal range, like these kind of mountains of sand that are there, one way that we could do that is to create half tones. And half tones are also all black and white, except they'll simulate a form of tonal range because the dots or the lines that create the half tones will have more density or different size depending on the tonal range. So in the shadows, I'll get more black. In the highlight areas, I'll get smaller dots that are farther apart. And so we can simulate a kind of tonal range through half tone. So how do you make these things? Let's get started with that. Now, the first thing that you'll want to do is resave your image because you don't want to write over your original file as we change things. So I'm going to go ahead and do a save as and save this to a file to prepare for screen printing. I'll just call it screen print one. Uh, all right, now that I've got that particular file and I got to click OK here, I can um, make sure that my image size is correct. So the first thing to do is go down to your image image size and think about what size that you want for your final print. If I had this print intended to be 8x6, then I've got this perfect. I recommend a resolution of 300. Now, if I wanted this to be a, a print that was 12 inches in size, I could change that, but I'd be artificially adding a lot of pixels and lowering the quality. One thing about creating half tones, however, is that you can compensate for some quality loss because the half tones will all go to black and white. And so some of the fuzzy edges actually sort of disappear when we go to half tone. However, I already prepared this at the right size at the resolution that I want. So I'm going to cancel this particular operation. Okay, the next step is to convert our image to grayscale as we are going to be working only in black and white. So I'm going to go to the image mode grayscale to make that conversion. I could flatten the image to get rid of my other unused layers and discard those. And now we have a black and white image. The next part is to actually adjust the tonal range of this image. I'm going to use my image adjustment levels to do that. So I'll go under, go under levels. And we might want to make sure that we've got like a true black in our image and a true white and adjust the tonal range to the sort of range that we think appropriate for our printing. If I wanted a little more contrast, I just added a bit more contrast to this image. If we're making flats, we want to make sure that we get the sort of darkest blacks and bring our input at least to the beginning of our sort of tones in black. Now this might be a little bit dark for my screen print, so I could decide to lighten that up a little bit, sort of get the tones that I'm looking for. The next piece is to adjust the output levels. And so if I was printing this particular screen, I've gotta be concerned a little bit about dot gain. So as we're pushing ink through the screen, the ink will bleed just a little bit, and it often will get a little bit darker than we might expect. And so we can make our sort of black dots, if you will, a little bit smaller by adjusting the output levels. And so a good place to put the output levels is right around 25. This actually makes the image lighter and a little bit grayer, but it will, when we make our sort of halftone dots, this will allow for some level of compensation while we're printing, compensating for that dot gain. So set your output levels to 25 in that particular case, and now we're ready to actually convert this to halftone. So to convert to halftone, you're gonna be using this image mode option for bitmap, but we're gonna to wanna to flatten our image before we do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, 
and flatten the image. And you notice that if I'm on the image adjustment layer, bitmap is not an option, but once we flatten and combine these layers together, and I'm gonna right click and choose to flatten the image, once we combine those together, we can then use the mode bitmap. And this is where we'll actually convert to a halftone screen. So the output resolution should be 300. Some people use something a little bit larger if you were trying to get really high quality resolution, but 300 should be great. And then the method, if it's not set to halftone screen, would be halftone screen. I'll click OK. And now we can set some of the settings for our creating our halftones. So the frequency will be the size of the actual dots, and the lower the number, the bigger the dots. A good rule of thumb is to take your mesh count of your screen and divide it by four, and that's a pretty good sort of uh, rule of thumb. So if I had a 230 mesh count, I could divide that by four, which is roughly like 57 or something. Uh, I don't quite love the odd number there, so I might use up to 65 for really fine detail, but no higher than that. Because at a certain point, if we, our dots are too small, then they're not going to work on the mesh. It, it like it's just so if I had a 110 screen and a 65 frequency, that would really be too high for that particular mesh count. So you can think about dividing your mesh by about four and going on a 230 mesh no higher than about 65. I'm going to use 60 in this particular case. The next piece is the actual angle of our. Um, our dots. If you were actually doing color separation, such as splitting your channels for CMYK, you'd want each of your dots to be at different angles, separated by about 15 to 30 degrees. And generally, the yellow at zero, cyan at 15, black at 45, and magenta at 75 is a, re a recommendation to prevent patterns from uh, emerging in your design. For our purposes here, I'm going to use an angle of 15, and then the shape of the halftone could either be round or ellipse. We'll use ellipse for this particular case. I suppose you could use other types of styles. You could play with these, but generally ellipse will be your choice. We're ready to hit OK, and so I can go ahead and hit OK, and it will create our halftone dots. We can zoom in on that to see sort of the quality of those and the distribution of those. But if we zoom out, it doesn't look great, but this will print really, really nicely onto a transparency at a good high resolution. Uh, in order to print that, I need to convert this back from bitmap to RGB. So the first step in that is to go back to grayscale and you'll get this size ratio where you want to keep that at one. And then once you're in grayscale, it looks a little nicer in this case, we could switch the mode back to RGB for printing. So I'll go to RGB color and I'm ready to print this to a transparency. I could save my file at this point. And then I could send it to my printer and print my transparency. Now, if I was trying to conceptualize sort of what color I wanted this to print in, one thing that you might do is go to your solid color adjustments. And when you bring up your solid color, you can choose sort of any color for this. So let's say I was imagining printing this in a kind of cyan color. I could choose my color, click OK, and then apply that color back to the screen just by choosing to lighten. And we could see sort of what that might look like if we were printing in that particular color. So if you wanted to play with color and simulate that, this kind of color overlay using a blend mode is a good way to see, okay, like I'm thinking about printing it in this particular color, what would it look like in that color? And there you go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to one other image here and demonstrate creating a threshold version for spot color. So if I've got an image like this and I wanted to convert it to threshold, again, I would use my image adjustments and I could choose threshold to simply make this a black and white image. And I can adjust my threshold in terms of the lights and darks by going left and right. Now, depending on what I want this to look like, I might not get the perfect threshold adjustment, right? Like maybe I'd like a little bit of detail down here where I can see some of that and I wanna be able to see the eye, but I actually want it a little bit darker on top. And so we could play around with this and then make some adjustments after the fact. So I'm gonna have one threshold right here. Now, one thing that I could do with this is then simply say, okay, 
I'd like to bring out some of the detail that's below and maybe some of the detail in the eye. And to do that, I could lighten the image itself. And so I'm gonna go to my dodge tool and simply use my brush here to dodge, for example, elements of the eye. And as I do that, and particularly if I have higher exposures to my dodge, you'll see that some of those details are coming back around the eye. I could use a little bit larger brush and sort of bring in some details in other places and sort of paint back some of what I wanted for my threshold. So I could sort of readjust my threshold to get a little bit more of the detail that I wanted to be a part of it. So that'd be one way to do that, is to use your dodge tool. And you might be able to see that as I dodge, I'm actually lightening these areas, right? And so when I apply threshold, it's going to make a different change. Another way that I could do this, I'm going to throw that one away, is maybe I've got one version of the threshold and um, I want to make sort of a different version and then composite them together. So you could do that as well. In this particular case, what I'll do is I'll group these two. I'm going to go ahead and click on the folder group icon to group my first threshold. Then I'm going to duplicate that group. And in the second one, I might create a different version of this. So in the threshold of this, maybe I have like the lighter version that I like. And so I'm going to kind of lighten this up. And maybe I want this lighter version to be what's used more for the eye and some of what's down here. Now, what I could do is composite these two versions together. And in order to composite that together, what I'll do is I'll add a layer mask to this. Sometimes I'll add the layer mask um, by while holding down the Alt or Option key. And when I do that, it will fill my layer mask with black so it's fully masked out. And then I'll paint back in some of the highlights that I wanted using a, a white brush. So I'm gonna to go to my brushes and paint these back in. So as I do that, I could sort of lighten some areas back out with my brush. Now, if you're using a soft edge brush for this, you might get some grays in here and these grays will not show up as part of, um, you know, I, I won't be able to use those grays as part of, um, a truly thresholded image and so I'm going to switch my colors by hitting X and paint those back in but let's say I did get a little bit of sort of gray area here like what do I do with this this gray what I could do is sort of re-threshold it so that would be another way to do this to get it back to black and white so I could like re-threshold the entire thing and that would turn this black into black and white. And so that, you know, without that, I might get some gray areas and I can't really have those gray areas. I could re-threshold them. Uh, the other thing is you could just make sure that you use a hard edge brush as you're painting that back in and kind of getting what you want. So those are a couple techniques for this. And again, I, uh, at this point, I could save my file, maybe save as to do a different file name for that. I'd be able to print this to a transparency. It's pure black and white at this point. Uh, if you wanted to simulate what a spot color might look like, you might also use that solid color adjustment to create a color layer on top. And so let's say I was imagining printing this in a kind of red color. I could click OK. And what I'll do is simply use the lighter color option uh, to kind of see what we'd get. And because red is always going to be lighter, any color is always going to be lighter than the black, it would just show through in that case. If you chose the darker color option, you could see what it might look like to print black on a red flat you know, or a red sheet of paper, right? And so we can kind of look at what we might be getting when we print this. We can conceptualize our colors that way and kind of figure out our color scheme together. Uh, but I'd be ready to print this threshold image to transparency. Okay, so those are the two basic methods for preparing uh, files using Photoshop for screen printing. I hope you enjoyed the ride.